You remember those just say no to drugs videos from the 90s? Yeah, us too. What would I do if someone offered me these drugs? I'd tell them to take a hike. I just want to shake some sense into you kids that are using drugs and thinking about using it. So remember, don't or else. Say no may be the smartest thing you ever do. You got a right to say no. I always thought those videos didn't work. I knew that if I was offered drugs, it would probably come not from a stranger like in the videos. It was going to be from some friend or somebody that I was in class with, or it was somebody in the community everybody knew. That was going to be the hard person to say no to. Also, side note, I was never offered any free drugs. What's up with that? All this training and all this money, and I was never once, not once, offered any amount of free drugs. What a waste. I want my free drugs. <laughs> but seriously though, all jokes aside, standing up for yourself and saying no is a necessary skill, both in life and in business. You're gonna have to learn how to say no to a potential customer. But why would you ever say no to money? Or to a sale? That's the topic of today's episode of Maker's Money. change angles here. It might be really easy to say no to a complete stranger. I mean, we're taught from a very young age, don't talk to strangers, blah, blah, blah. It's really easy to refuse and say no to a total stranger. But what if somebody offering you the job or offering you the commission is a really trusted friend, family member, or coworker? That's where it gets sticky. That's where it gets hard. How do you say no to money from people who want to support you that are already close to you in your network? Especially if you're a brand new business and you're just trying to get off the ground, money gets to be really important. Every sale seems like it matters. So we asked the Stud Stack, our private Discord server for makers who want to make money, for similar stories about saying no to customers. A couple of them wanted to share their experiences with, with you, with YouTube. They wanted to give you a sneak peek of what the Stud Stack looks like from the inside. So here are two business owners who have learned that it's okay to say no to a customer. Hey, Jason Robinson, Sport Class Customs here, and we make a wooden cigar ashtray and a drink holder combination. We were hired on by a real estate group to make 20 cutting boards as closing gifts. And uh, what we realized going through that process was that we actually lost money on the deal. And the reason why is because we were spending time away from a known system and process that we have in play to make those cigar ashtrays uh, really quickly. So the next time the real estate group came around, we had to tell them that we weren't fulfilling any more of their cutting board orders. And as painful as it was to say no, in our gut, we knew it was the right decision to make. Hey guys, about three months ago, a lady uh, posted on Facebook in one of the local groups asking if anybody knew somebody who made picnic tables. I run a small custom furniture shop. I don't really do picnic tables. I could. A friend of mine tagged me in it. Uh, the lady reached out to me asking me what I had in stock and what my prices were. I was honest with her up front. I told her I don't have anything in stock. I could make you a picnic table, but honestly, I'm two to three weeks out from being able to start. I pointed her in the direction of a local guy who does do picnic tables and we went our own separate ways. Uh, she respected the honesty, didn't hurt my business at all. In fact, my business has picked up since. So the weekend after we quit active duty and joined the Hurricane Hunters, somebody in our unit found out that we were starting our business up again. He told us that he wanted to buy a really nice, solid wood desk from us. This was going to be our first customer. We were elated. So in our excitement, we set up a meeting with this guy. Our shop wasn't even unpacked yet and we were already getting jobs. Everything was going great. The sales process was going super smooth. We nailed out a nice healthy budget. He knew exactly what he wanted and we started hashing out the details of how exactly this desk was gonna look. But then he breezed past something really quickly. We almost didn't hear it, but he said, I don't want any metal fasteners in this desk. So we, we poked a little bit. We said, what do you mean you don't want any metal fasteners? And he says, oh yeah, I want hand cut through dovetails, you know, mitered uh, with matching grain over the waterfall edge and then bookmarked to match the grain on top all the way down the entire desk. I mean, what he wanted was a $15,000 desk. I mean, this is the kind of desk that Mark Spagnolo and Matt Cremona would die to make for the Wood Whisperer Guild. It was that level of project. So right out of the gate, the weekend we were in processing to our brand new unit, we didn't even have ID cards to get on base yet. Somebody was sold on hiring us to do a job, but we just couldn't do it. 
we had to break the deal. We had to break it for a lot of reasons. First off, we're just not that good. Let's put that out there. I don't think we could have pulled it off and made him happy. But even if we could, that's not the kind of business we wanted to run this go around. We wanted to be much more production based than fully custom. So what do we say to him? Well, we were just honest. We just straight up told him like, yo, dude, you're not gonna be happy with how we have to do this. That's not really the style of woodworking that we're best at. So I'm sorry, but I just don't think we can get it done. We never really talked about the desk again. We were heartbroken. We were so scared that he felt rejected or that we didn't want to do the project. We were just worried that we had made him feel bad. And that resulted in us being kind of like awkward around him. But after flying with him a few times, we realized that he didn't feel awkward at all. We were projecting that onto him and making the situation awkward for ourselves. He didn't care. He just went on about his life. And that's where we learned the really important lesson that saying no to a customer is really not that big of a deal. If a customer throws a fit because you say no to them up front, imagine the tantrum they would throw if they weren't happy with what you made. You don't wanna be anywhere near that kind of customer. We made a whole video about them. But it's okay to say no. It's your business. If there's a job you don't wanna do, if there's a person that you don't wanna deal with, if there's a certain style that you just don't wanna show that your business does, it's okay to say no. What do you want, like my permission? Here you go, It's here's your permission. It is okay to say no. You don't need to take every job that comes your way. By saying no, you're not letting anybody down, you're not failing anybody, you're not ruining anybody's life, they'll be fine. Just because you own your own business doesn't mean you have to bend over backwards to satisfy every single person who asks you about a job. Yes, the customer is always right, but they may not always be right for you, and it's okay for you to say no. If you've watched any of our past Makers Money videos, you should know that you should have so many leads out there. You should be talking to so many people that you should say no more than you're saying yes because you have so many jobs that people are requesting that you're overwhelmed and you have to say no to a few. I mean, at this point, Jen and I have got our processes so dialed in on these cutting and charcuterie boards that we say no to about 95% of all the custom jobs that come our way. Again, we're still trying to build our reputation. We've been in business six months in Houston. That's nowhere near enough time to have established enough credibility to be able to say no. No, like, get that out of your head. You can just say no. It's totally okay for you to wait and only take the jobs that fit a certain criteria for you and your business. So what do you say? Tell them to take a hike. Just tell them no. Say, that's not quite what I do. Or say, sorry, my schedule is full. Or you could say, you wouldn't be happy with how I would do this. Or you could say, I don't quite have the experience level to give you what you want. There are a bunch of really polite ways to say no. You don't even have to say no. You could make them say no. When they inevitably ask, how much is this gonna cost? Throw them a number that's higher than you could ever imagine that they would pay. You got a very difficult customer or a very difficult family member to please, charge them $10,000 for a coffee table. If they say yes, all right, it's worth working with this person to build a coffee table. But more times than not, you're gonna price it so ridiculously high that they'll just say, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to spend that much money. And you got them to say no, and it's not you, it's them. So speaking of price, how do you actually price at a profitable level? I know we always say price high, but what does that look like? How do you get exact numbers? Is, is there a formula to follow? What about shop costs and materials and labor? How much profit should I be making on each piece? That's the topic of the next Maker's Money video. So subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when it comes out. Let us know a time that you've said no to a customer down in the comments. I'm sure we could all learn a lesson from your experience. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next one.